That sounds great. Um, but yeah, we can start with the question, who has seen, um, who knows the um, community canvas? It's fine. We did that in the chat a second ago, so we might have a look there. And what I see, some mixed mixed ratio. <laughs> no, no, yes, no, okay. yes, 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 no. OK. Good that most of you haven't heard of it. That's good for me. Um, Ahemar Simon, if you could keep an eye on the chat, because um, I yep. can put it on the other one, so on the other screen, so um, that would be good. Well, um, when building a community, it's not like build it and they will come. Um, employees have a really full schedule of work. They've got endless mails, calls, meetings. Um, they must see and understand the value of the community for every single one of them. So even for your company, if the value is clear, your employees every single one of them really have to get the value for themselves to personally invest some time and knowledge into the community. So you need really need to get the community right. You need to have a strategy because without a strategy, your community is going to fail. And if it failed once, most of the time organizations don't give it a second go. The community canvas model, what we are looking at now, um, will help you to get to that strategy. It doesn't cover all parts, but give you an awesome overview what you need to look at to build your community. So before we start, just a few words about me. Um, my name is Tanya Lau. I'm also on LinkedIn, even so I realized before that on the Barcamp page, the link goes uh, to a woman from Daimler. So, but you can find me with my name. I work in community management since 2006. I used to work for a media group RTL and for Douglas. And since 2010, um, I'm a consultant for community management about community dialogue, building up internal and external communities. Um, I'm also chairwoman of BVCM the Professional Association for Community Managers here in Germany. And together with a colleague, I'm organizing a conference about community management. But what we want to talk about now is this. That's the community canvas model. Um, it was created by three guys from Switzerland, which now live in the US, in New York. And you can use it for all kinds of communities, either if it's external or internal, if you want to build it up on your own platform or on a social media platform. And yes, I just said that, so don't get me started why you can't really build a community on social media platforms, but if you think you can, you can use it for that. Um, and now we are going to have a focus on internal community building. So. This community canvas consists of three areas. You can see the blue, the red, the green one, and on 17 themes. So we're starting with the blue theme because that's the heart of it. That's the identity. The one talks about why does the community exist? So the main question, who are we and what do are we believing in? So it's important for you to know who your employees are, what they think, what their values are, um, what the values of the company is, and how you can transport those values into the community. So are you a really transparent company or are you really conservative? Are you talking over here in Germany? We, we don't say you, but we have a do and a see. So what are the values? How are you transporting those into the community? Um, the purpose is really important. You always need to have one main purpose for your community. You can have several ones, but you have to have one main one because your resources are limited. 
And you really need to know where you're focusing your resources. Like, for example, the community from Adam and his colleagues from Daimler, it focuses on to drive the digital transformation process in the company. And value also means um, if you're open, if you're transparent, how you communicate, what's your tone of voice and things like that. You also have the success definition and the brand in this blue part. So it's really all about the identity. And this is a slide from the BBCM report um, about how community and social media management in Germany um, is working and the goals for most internal community platforms is to connect the employees with each other. 93% said, well, that's our main goal. Um, and then we have knowledge sharing or the exchange of knowledge and to better work together. From the blue part, we are going to the red one. And the red part is the user view. So what does what value does the community give to your employees? How do the employees perceive the community? What can they get out of it? So usually in the selection process, um, you're thinking about, OK, who is going to be in our community? That's easy when you're doing an uh, internal one because that are your employees. But how are, is the onboarding process? How do you welcome a new employee? How do you introduce them in the community? How do you introduce them into the company? Um, there are all things you can consider here. Then on the other side, you've got a transition process. And this one is really, really important for internal communities. Um, because with external ones, it's often that people just go. The customers just leave a community and never be seen. But internally, you know when an employee leaves the company, you know the exact date. And you can choose if there's a special part of the community where your employees can still be part of your community. So you can still be connected to them. So maybe at some point, they might even come back to your um, company and work for you again. Then we have the rules. Um, and the rules count for both sides. So what is allowed to talk? What's not allowed to talk? How we are interacting with each other? What happens if someone goes against the rules? And over here, it's really important that you make obvious that employees are free to talk and that they can criticize without fearing to lose their job um, if they criticize in a normal manner um, and stick to the rules. Um, if someone shouts or is mean to others, sure, that's going to have consequences. Um, we are talking about rituals in this one, like we're having a town hall meeting every month, or we're having a get together every week, or we're having um, a call of our department every Wednesday afternoon. So see how what kind of rituals and traditions you've got in your community um, which are growing or which you can implement. Um, in the part of shared experience, um, that's what kind of experience does everyone have? And those are very different for every person. You can be at the same meeting, but everyone has its own perception how it was. And then you need to see how you can share those experiences and the content part to your community. How can you share the work and opinions of your employees within the community? And all those user experience, especially the content part, leads to one thing. How do you keep your community active? How do you keep them engaged? Because engagement is the biggest frust frustration of online communities. Um, the slide from the CM, recent CMCX report 
refers to both external and internal communities, but it's the same with internal communities. Um, how do you get your employees engaged? How do you get them to work in the community? Um, and engagement means meaningful engagement. So just don't look for engagement that you have engagement. Sure, sports group and everything else are fine, but you need to have engagement that's meaningful to both, that's meaningful to your employees and that's meaningful to the organization. And in the last bit and the green part, we've got that what gives the community a long lasting stability. So in the organizational part, who is responsible for which parts? Um, so for example, how and how long are employees allowed to participate in the community? Are there differences between collaboration and special interest times? I know a lot of companies have an 80 to 20 rule. So they can spend 20% of their time to work in a community. The financing part over here isn't that um, important for the internal communities because usually it's founded by the organization. But channels and platforms, you need to know where is the community gathering. And it's also important how the data is managed and what kind of data is stored. Um, governance, not to forget that point, is about who is making the decisions and what gives those people the power to actually make this decision. So if you're looking at the whole concept, um, not everything is gathered in here, like we're kind of missing a bit of the resources. You could maybe put that in the organization part, but and some other things. But this is an awesome structure, so you can really think about how to build your community. And especially internal communities are so important for organizations nowadays. Before I take your questions, I brought you um, some slides and statistics from the current um, report of Community Roundtable. Because internal communities um, have a lot of untapped potential. They, they, are, they are delivering complex business outcomes, like 54% um, helping the companies to change the whole company and the culture. There is a lot of communications efficiency, so people work better together. There's a bigger awareness of branding and the productivity improves as well as um, the innovation. Also, what the report tells you, that internal communities really empower the members in the internal community. They are providing solutions, they ask questions, um, and a lot of different other things. Um, what's really interesting is that um, companies spend even more money on platforms and technology instead of the community manager. They do spend a bit on the community, or they do spend money on a community manager, but not as much as on the platform. So usually you should have much more money on the community manager because that's the one who actually drives the community. And you need a good platform, but a lot of people just put there the biggest and shiniest tool without anyone knowing how to work with it. And getting to the last slide, um, advanced communities that are the ones that have a measurable strategy, they actually generate a higher ROI than just a normal community. If you invest $172, you can actually gain $822. And um, that's just a little more of investment um, in comparison to the average community, but you get so much more out of it. And the internal communities, 22% have no full-time staff members. And the average internal team staff is about 2.8 people. Um, our BBCM study showed that for all community and social media management teams in Germany, 
the average of community teams is less than three people. Okay, that was a quick rush because we don't have a lot of time here today. If you have any questions, you can ask them now and later on you'll find me here. So thank you, Tanya. We have quite some time, 13 minutes in fact, left according to my clock here. <clears throat> so uh, there was a lot of rumor here in the chat. Uh, statements have been exchanged. Uh, what to point out? Um, yeah, would, would, could you comment? Uh, there was some discussions on that. Uh, a lot of people out there do not know the canvas or the the idea of community of practices concepts, uh, but are managing communities. Uh, what is your experience on that? And what uh, what do you think? What should how you should approach? simply start and then think, rethink, react, rescope, PDCA, or plan in advance and then start? That's actually a tough question. Um, often it kind of starts as a grassroots um, movement and it just starts. Um, that can work, but at some point, um, you reach a situation where you really need to go there strategically. So you really need to have a plan. You need to have your goals. Um, you need to know where you want to go. You can do that from the start, or you can do that while your community is developing. But if you just keep the community as it is, and it just can do whatever it wants, it usually doesn't provide the value it actually could for your community. Thank you. I'm sure Adam might have something to comment on that as well. You're muted. Achim, you're muted. <laughs> oh, no, now I'm not muted anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, as you say, strategy is important, but I also think um, start early, start before you're ready, bring some people together and then have maybe a strategy framework behind you. Think big, uh, but go in little steps uh, forward together with the people that matter for the community. They will tell you where to go and how to develop it. Um, yeah, so start early, but uh, don't forget the strategy. There was another question. I don't know if you can hear me anymore. There was another question um, because you mentioned engagement, Tanya. Uh, so um, what do you mean with engagement? Is it just likes and clicks and shares? Uh, is it anything else in internal communities? Yes, well, engagement is everything that drives activity in the community. That is how you communicate, um, how you force the dialogue. Um, and it's also about if people take part in events, if people um, be active, if they be part of a call or whatever. So engagement um, kind of gets to everything. It's not just the like, but it's, it's so much more. And there are different kinds of levels of engagement. Link is something different as if someone says, OK, I'm going to be a community chapter leader and I'm opening my own crew. Um, but you have to foster all of those activities. And actually, I don't know if we have any other questions, but my question would have been what your best practice for engagement is. So would you answer that or do we want, does, does everybody, yeah. anybody want to answer that? That was my question for everyone. So just put your ideas to the chat or open simply open your mic. Well, I perhaps I might say a sentence. Um, 
I put the observation in the chat that a lot of people in internal community management came to the field when uh, enterprise to zero platforms and social networks were a thing, like in 2011 plus. And they never came in touch with the with the theoretical concepts behind communities and how they contrast to projects and departments and so on. So I think it's important to to have a clear idea what a community is in contrast to to a department, for example, or a task force or a project. And what I like to uh, to start with in community projects is the definition of Etienne Wenger, who says that a community of practice is a group of people who share a concern or passion for something and uh, a group of people who learn by interacting on an ongoing basis. And there's this saying, you recognize that you're in a community in a community of practice when your practice changes like when your practice is improving. And this puts a lot of focus on what is what is the joint passion? What is the practice that we do? What kind of content do we have to share? Is it checklists? Is it templates? Is it experiences? Is it ideas, uh, new concepts, innovations? And I think this uh, this is at least as well as important as having a an eye on community click rates and new member rates and so on because that doesn't say you anything there might be a community of practice with 15 people and it's very valuable for a company and it, it, it's not a thing to make a hundred out of it and it doesn't matter uh, if you have perhaps you have five comments on a post and the, exactly the right idea is in the comments and it doesn't make sense to force people to have a hundred comments on that on that so I always try to put a focus on that, on that, what does a community make? What, what is the idea? What is our definition beha behind it? And then see if there's anything we have to measure or if this measurement of, of engagement brings value to that community or not. Yeah, maybe something to add for engagement. We don't ha only have to look at the engagement in communities because that's where it also uh, where the, the difference is between social media management and a community. I think the links, relationships, the interactions is much looser on social media. Like when you are, are an influencer on Instagram, you have a lot of people who like you, you comment, but they go and come in a community. The benefit is a more uh, rather a shared benefit uh, because maybe something comes out of the community, uh, probably the core members do have much stronger relationships. And so the engagement has a different quality. So you have to look to find somehow a way to measure that quality of the, the engagement. So do they have open discussions with long posts, something like that, not only haha -ha like and stuff like that, such so uh, more transient stuff, but um, what is what's, what is the outcome of the community and try also to ask people more, what do they think, is this a community, do they have benefit from it? Quality is, I think for community, quality of engagement is very important. Absolutely, you really have to look at the quality and not only the quantity um, of the engagement. But there was you, a best practice uh, yeah, in the, the chat. Can you please unshare mm -hmm. because some people don't know how to get the full person's view here. Simply unshare and then we will get. Yeah, it's already happened. Yeah, oh, right. okay. You can right click on the video uh, uh, video images and then uh, I think it's pin in English or unheften in German to make one one participant. Big. There was a from Doreen as a best practice asking question, uh, asking questions going so far to to force a decision, how I understand it, to make uh, uh, to make or feed a decision to make or feedback to give. Um, Maybe Doreen wants to explain something on that. I can try. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, for me, it was the, the point like um, you can post a lot in a community, but um, it's like sometimes fire and forget. People read it, but it's like, yeah, good. <laughs> because I mean, we get a lot of news every day, everywhere. So I think it's really the key to also like ask for feedback, like, 
ask a question what are your um, experiences what are um, what do you want to contribute to this topic or like it's also not like a um, total insurance that you get any feedback but at least people maybe think about and, and want to um, give some some input from their side and also if it's possible in this community where you are like also maybe tech people directly say like uh, hi Thomas I saw this last time can you tell something about this um, really like um, interact and don't just post something to post something Okay, some, somebody, I think, Simon, you mentioned the ICAP model. Hello? It's gone. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the ICAP model is at Siemens, um, so I would have loved an, <laughs> an explanation for that. <clears throat> Me yeah, either. but mm -hmm. anybody else with uh, best practices um, for engagement? I think I like the 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 word feedback because feedback is uh, something of the most central things in community, either for improving the community, but also for leadership in communities, um, or for yeah leadership that goes back to the organizations like some input that goes back to the organization to change and transform some structures uh, some some projects some missions that are going on so feedback is so fundamental and it's a good thing that be obtained in communities i don't know what you think about that I think it's always important that a lot of the engagement and the feedback you have in a community actually um, also belongs to your goals. Um, where you want to go with the community. Because otherwise, if you just have activity, what's not going to your goals at some point, the organization is going, hey, we've got a striving community, but it doesn't, it's of any value to us. And the other side of value has to be for the employees as well. But I need that feedback as well. Mm -hmm. oh, there's Simon again, so yeah. maybe he can explain the ICAP model. Uh, I just <laughs> I just need to tell the others that we are about to uh, have to recap. Uh, yes, the ICAP model is a uh, is a model developed at uh, Siemens AG to measure the success of social networks and especially communities, and it's sort of a uh, a pyramid model where you measure what you can measure quantitatively at the lower, um, what's called the lower floor of the pyramid, and then you go to more um, uh, qu uh, qualitative uh, measurements and you create sort of a value networks with value drivers and so on. Uh, I will, uh, as soon as we uh, have all the people here, I have a paper on that and I post the link to the paper in the chat. So it's the other group yeah. joining us now. Yes, yep. yes, they just, they just finished a minute ago. And I have already the sessions open and a timer, so every every session owner can give a one minute recap then. Mm -hmm. so, so far, thank you, Tanya, for your insights. And I'm curious whether we got some more reactions on that. Uh, you offered to be open for discussions. Uh, I guess you entered your email there. Uh, but you're also available nearly everywhere, LinkedIn and so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah, you'll find me. 